<laughs> there. Hey, Abe, thanks for waiting. You, you are the last caller. You're in New Jersey, and you're on with Matt and Don. Uh, hey, guys. How is everything? Uh, a mess. <laughs> well, I don't know. I, I just saw you. You're, you're destroying her over there. It's funny. Yeah, I'll try not to be racist. <laughs> <laughs> what have you got for us okay, today? Well, uh, so I have all... So um, let me first say that... Uh, I'm a I'm a Muslim, and uh, I have to say that I've been listening to your guys' show recently for quite some time, and it's very interesting. And I think that you're you bring a lot of good points, and I've been yeah I've been considering your viewpoints for quite some time. That's and great, thank cool. you. I, I, yeah, I appreciate you doing that. Yeah. So I so basically what I want to present, I just want to pre I want to present this argument that a lot of Muslims and like they they present this kind of argument and it just I, I'm it's there's just something particularly strange about it like it's just like it's strangely convincing but I don't know if it should be convincing. Okay, but that's I'll, good I'll, I'll because you're it sounds like your your bullshit detector is is going off. So let's 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 hear it and let's tear it apart. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. So okay. So basically, the first okay. So the first part part of this is, is that in the in the in the Quran, uh, the Quran presents a literary and linguistic challenge to humanity. So basically, in like the first chapter of the Quran, uh, it it presents this challenge. It says that if you doubt that this book was written by God, then produce something like it, and that's supposed to mean not like a, as a subjective literary judgment, but more like a produce something that's even of similar quality in terms of literary merit. Okay, we can stop so there. Like the we can stop there. That's a fallacy. That something is true until it's shown to be false. So the uniqueness of the Quran, which every book is unique, except for cop uh -huh. copies of the book, but th Christians use the same thing. They talk about the uniqueness of the Bible, the uniqueness of prophecy, the uniqueness of what Jesus supposedly fulfilled, et cetera. Muslims do the same thing with the Quran. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter how unique it is. It doesn't matter whether somebody could produce something remotely similar. That is not a testimony to the truth of the claims within the book, period. Yeah, so uh, no, I understand what you're saying. So I guess what Muslims are trying to say, they're trying to say that it's inimitable in the sense that- I don't it care. Not have been written- That's not relevant. The fact that you couldn't, yeah. I'm, first of all, I'm not conceding that it's true. I'm saying even if it were true, that doesn't change whether or not this is a book that speaks on behalf of God. Uh huh. So, yeah, um, I guess, well, the thing is, is that what, so th what they're trying to say is, so I, because I've, I've heard this argument from like, uh, a couple of, I guess, apolog uh, Muslim apologists, mm -hmm. and what they're what they're trying to say is basically not like all like they're the trying to say that the only way this book could be unique is if it actually comes from God. That is a bald assertion that they do not demonstrate that they cannot demonstrate at all. Mm -hmm. it, they are they are snowing you. They are buffaloing you. They are bullshitting you. They bullshitted themselves. They're saying this book is so clearly and obviously important that it must have come from God. No man could produce this book while simultaneously yeah. acknowledging that a man actually, you know, dictated and wrote the book. But they do it with, oh, well, this is with the guidance of Allah, and no man on its own could, could produce this, which I don't accept is actually true, but I don't care because even if it were true that nobody else could produce this other than the individual who did, that doesn't mean that he could only produce it because he was communicating with God. That, that, this, this video for this week, I shit you not, is going to be assuming facts, not in evidence, because that's what's happening over and over. And what they're essentially doing is saying, we're convinced that this could only come about from a God, and we will remain convinced until you prove that something like this could come about from something other than God. Here's the problem. You can say that about the Quran. You can say that about the Bible. You can say that about the Bhagavad Gita. You can say that about the Urantia stuff. You can say that about um, uh, Nostradamus's writings. You can say that about anybody and about, any writer. Zen and the other motorcycle maintenance. Yeah. 
<laughs> no, you could say that about innumeracy. John Allen Paulus's book that I recommend all the time. You could say nobody but John Allen Paulus, with the with the guidance of a god, could have produced a book like Innumeracy. And even if that, even if there were no way to demonstrate that, that was wrong, that does not prove that, that God was involved. Yeah. It's, that, a, it's that, an that, attempt yeah, to shift the burden of proof. That, yeah. yeah, it it is prove me wrong. And if you've set up an unfalsifiable scenario, the easiest thing you can ever do is say, I'm going to believe until you prove me wrong. And you'll never be proved wrong because you have an unfalsifiable claim. If there's no way to falsify it, it's not a claim worth considering. Yeah, so no, that makes sense. Uh, I guess, like, the way I think about it is that you have, so you have this book, and there had to, there had to have been some agents who wrote this book, right? You have a book, there needs to be an explanation for who wrote it, right? But usually then, books have authors, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so it has to have an author. So what um, what they're trying to say is that a person could not have written the book. Okay, prove it. Whatever they claim. If they are claiming it is impossible for a person to write this book without God, they need to actually demonstrate that. It's not up to you to disprove it. You're buying into the thing that they're doing where they're shifting the burden of proof. Um, yeah, so... Uh, so what I was trying to do is I wasn't trying to say like oh you have to disprove it I was I was trying that's to that's what say they're like, saying yeah so I was trying to like I so they're what they do is like they they like show all these like quotes they give all these quotes from like uh like linguistic scholars or whatever and they say oh these quotes they what they consist of like scholars saying oh the in terms of linguistic merit like the Quran is very good or whatever and. And it's just like, okay, so that doesn't necessarily mean that it's from God, but you have... And it doesn't mean it's true. You have to have some... But you but you have to have some... You have to, like... There needs to be a best explanation, and you have to rule out other explanations. Yeah, like, but there, the, there's, the problem here is that while there is an explanation, that doesn't mean anybody necessarily has access to it at any given point. Yeah, and it ha and it has yeah. no bearing on whether the the book is true, right? I mean, yeah, that's, literary yeah, criticism I mean, that's that's pretty weak evidence in my mind. <laughs> yeah, the reason, yeah, the, like I was like it, the thing about like like I don't know, like I was a little skeptical of it because it just the pro like if you say like like literary like judgment is not like it, it's not very objective right and it's based right so i i just that's why i was like it just like it doesn't it didn't seem right a little bit you know so yeah that well was, i would yeah, i would so. demand better evidence right because that's pretty pretty poor yeah. evidence yeah so i mean yeah you got yeah that makes sense i guess yeah i i I just wanted to, like, because, like, I never really, like, heard a response from, like, atheists, like, to this kind of argument. Like, I've, like, I've heard, like, responses to, like, you know, the Quran yeah. being well, it's kind of a, scientific miracles. It's kind of a weak tea argument. We, we'd roll our eyes at that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know, <laughs> so I'll just, I, I pulled up kind of, like, random Quran stuff. Uh and, of course, it's in English. So all the Muslims that are getting ready to send me hate mail for saying I didn't get it right, tough. I, I'm going with what I have access to. Right, you got to uh, read it in Arabic, man. So <laughs> uh, those who disbelieve will be burned in the fire. That's 3116. I could have written that. Anybody attempting to... Oh, oh, that's very, very similar to what's written in the Bible. So clearly we can find individual verses that don't seem remarkable at all. As a matter of fact, they seem like the same manipulative bullshit that's in every other religion where you're trying to threaten somebody into actually believing in worship. So I found at least one verse that clearly anybody without any decent moral compass and with a desire to encourage people to believe them without evidence could certainly write something like that. Uh, I need to know from, from the Muslims exactly which verses do they think could have only been written with the guidance of a god. Because... 
I don't buy that. But even if they're convinced of it, that still doesn't prove that there's a God. And the big question is, yeah. where the fuck is Allah? Why do I have to read what his prophet told me? Why can't he interact with this? When it comes to Christianity, if a Damascus Road experience is good enough for Saul, then it should be good enough for everybody. And when it comes to Islam, if Allah has a message for me, he can come give it to me himself. Yeah. He's all powerful, right? I'm waiting. Yeah, and also I Not for you. <laughs> for Allah. Yeah. For the yeah, other I'll garbage concept that's been shoved down people's throats to manipulate everything for, for millennia. Well, not millennia, 700 years. Yeah, that's, no, no I agree. I, I think. I'd also argue that if, if, if there was a God that was gonna inspire a book uh, where it was clear that only God could have inspired this book, maybe he should have picked a prophet that wasn't into little girls. <laughs> okay. We don't need to go there. Yes, we do. <laughs> no, no, no. This is this is this is the obvious thing. So in Christianity, when God's going to destroy the world, who does he pick to save, to be the progenitor of everybody else who's going to exist? Noah, a drunk, a miserable drunk who curses one of his sons to be slaves of the, of the others, the descendants of him. When Allah needs a prophet, who does he pick? Somebody who's okay with marrying a nine-year-old. Well, uh I, I, I have would a bigger say, issue with him, you know, saying, "Hey, my friend here, I, I like your wife quite a bit. I should, you should give her to me." Yeah, <laughs> no, 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 that's that's the thing that's always coming up. I have yet to hear any message from any god ever, but I keep hearing from the chosen representatives of that god, and they are all pieces of shit. <laughs> Every fucking one of them have moral failings and character flaws that are beyond what we would accept as tolerable. If I have an important message for everybody, you will get it from me, guaranteed, until the day that I'm dead. I don't need a prophet. I don't need somebody to come and be my representative. And if I had to pick someone, like if I'm laid up in the hospital and I had an important message to deliver on the show, I would certainly not pick a monumental piece of shit. On that note, we gotta let you go. I appreciate the time, hopefully that helped out. Uh, yeah, there's, uh, there's a lot of stuff going on, but there's going to be pizza in the other room.